problems from the worksheet you did. Worksheet number two, the one you did the second day of this, probably this on Tuesday, if you got to that. And I'm going to work these problems. This is probably going to be kind of long, but I'm going to work through them, and you can watch what part of it you need to uh, in order to help you. Okay, so I got a request to make another video on the stuff we're covering right now in physics. Uh, I think some of you are having problems, which is fine. Um, these problems are not necessarily easy, and then trying to do them on your own, I can understand that. So basically what we're talking about, we're talking about motion, and study of motion is called kinematics. And so far, we've covered average velocity. We know that velocity is how fast something is going. It's the rate of change of displacement over time. And so our equation for that was delta d over t, how, what, the change in displacement over time. You know, and displacement is measured in meters. Time is measured in seconds. And then velocity has the units of meters per second. But if you notice, there's nothing about acceleration in this equation. This is just for your average velocity. But there's other equations that we can use that relate acceleration to velocity and to time and to displacement. And it can tell us our velocity at a specific time, which is called our instantaneous velocity, and not the average. Uh, so, and it can tell us our acceleration also, because that's, you know, that's the rate of change of velocity over time. And it's measured, well, acceleration, it's going to be measured in meters per second squared. So anytime you see a number that's got meters behind it, you know it's displacement. Anytime you have a number that's got seconds or minutes or hours, you know it's time. Anytime you see a number and has meters per second, we're talking about velocity. Anytime the number has meters per second squared, we're talking about acceleration. And basically, uh, we have more equations that can relate uh, all these things together, and they are called the Big Four equations, uh, where the first one is Vf equals V. And that zero means, it's called V naught. You could use VI if you wanted to for initial velocity. Just know that's it's your initial velocity plus A times T. So basically this equation says final velocity is equal to initial velocity because VF is your final velocity. V zero is your initial velocity plus acceleration times time. All right, so if I had a word problem that had certain things in it, I could, you know, I might could use this equation if it would work. All right, that's the first one. So basically, if I'm given uh, initial velocity, acceleration, and time, I could use this equation to solve final velocity. Or if I'm given final velocity, initial velocity, and acceleration, I can use it to solve for time. I just have to do some algebra. I have to move some stuff around to do that. Uh, second equation, uh, and the things we're always going to measure with these is always Vf V0, which is initial velocity. This up here is final velocity. And then a is going to be our acceleration, and T is our time, and of course we have D, which is going to be displacement. All right, those are the five things that are going to be uh, part of all these equations. However, these equations, each one of them only has four of these things in it. That's why we have, you know, we, there's not just one equation that can be used to solve all the types of problems we have because no one equation has all five of these variables in it. They all just have four in it and they're, uh, and you might not.
might not can use them to solve every problem. It depends on what the what information the problem gives you. All right, so our next equation is displacement is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half a times t squared. So we could use this equation to solve for displacement for we give initial velocity and time and acceleration. Or we could use it to solve for acceleration if we were given displacement, initial velocity, and time. But one thing we couldn't use it to solve for is final velocity, because final velocity is not part of this second equation. Just like displacement is not part of the number one equation here. So if we had a we had to solve for displacement, we could not use this top equation. Uh, the third one is D is equal to initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2 times time. Now that equation is written in a different form, the little equations that I, that's why I told you to write it down like this where it avoid confusion. And in this equation, if you could solve for your displacement, if you were given initial velocity and final velocity, in time. If you notice, similar, you know, it's not the same as equation number two. Equation number two doesn't have final velocity in it. You know, this equation has final velocity. So if you're given final velocity and, you know, uh, initial velocity, final velocity, and time, you could solve for displacement. As number two, you'd have to have your acceleration to solve for displacement. So they both, you know, couldn't be used on certain problems. You'll have to find out what the problem gives you and then see what equation you need. Uh, the last one is VF squared equals VI squared plus 2 AD 2 times A times D. Alright, so that's final velocity squared equals V, well, I think you can write that as VO, V consistent, even though you can write VI. The initial velocity squared plus 2 times your acceleration times your displacement. Alright, so these are equations you think about algebra if you were solving 2x equals 6. You would solve for x. We all know how to do that. You know, x would equal 3. Well, in this case, these, these equations are used because they relate all these variables, these, uh, they relate all these things together. You know, our whole universe works off math and equations. That's what physics is. It explains how the natural world works. Right, so we have these four equations we can pick from which one we need to use to solve a problem and there were problems we have to we're going to use the guess method and you're not guessing it's just givens write down your givens in the problem unknown write down your unknown that way if you write it all down you can see what equation you need to use d stands for equation write the equation that you need S is for substitute. And uh, the last S is for solve. All right, so it's kind of also, you know, if you're in a car that will show like this, that, you know, it has an initial velocity if it goes if it travels till it gets to this point right here where it has a final velocity and you know it has a time period in seconds or you know we're going to take it to these seconds so that's what we, we want the problem to be in 
and it's also got a displacement over that time period and it if it changes speeds and doesn't move at a constant velocity it has an acceleration over that time period also so we're just taking these equations and solving for these variables right here figuring it out Alright, so I'm taking this. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is read the problem carefully. Uh, a car slows down uniformly from a speed of 21.0 meters per second to rest in 6.00 seconds. How far did it travel in that time? Alright, so I wanted to go, usually I'm going to go and underline the important information. You know, it tells me that it slows down from a speed of 21 meters per second. What is that 21 meters per second telling me? It's telling me the speed that it's starting, what it's starting at. It's going from 21 meters per second to rest. So 21 meters per second is my initial. Rest is my, going to be my final speed, which if it's rest, it's going to be zero. It's coming to a stop. And then it tells me in 6.00 seconds, what is that telling me? It's in seconds, so that's got to be a time that it's telling me. And then it asks me how far did it travel in that time. How far? What is it asking for? It's asking for a displacement, and that's going to be my unknown. What I like to do is write down my givens in there. I like to write down all five variables in it when I work these. I know that I'm going to have, you know, initial as part of it, final, and I'll do this on every problem, acceleration, time, displacement. Not every problem is only going to give you three of these, and you're going to be solving for a fourth. So that's why we have to have four different equations that are slightly different, and one equation doesn't work on every single problem. All right, so if I write down my initial velocity was 21.0, meters per second, came to a rest, so my final velocity is zero. Acceleration, notice it doesn't give me acceleration. It tells me in 6.00 seconds. And then it's asking me for displacement, so I'm gonna put a question mark right there. Now, what's saying about acceleration, it doesn't give me acceleration, it doesn't ask for acceleration, so this is not going to be part of the problem. And that's going to help me because I can eliminate which one of these equations I cannot use. Uh, since acceleration is not part of the problem, it's not my unknown, I can eliminate all uh, three of these equations that don't have that. Very rarely, you'll, you know, you'll, have, you'll be able to use two of these equations that will work. You know, but uh, that, more likely there's only one that will work on each problem. You notice the first equation up here at the top has acceleration in it right there, so I can mark it out, so it won't work. The next one has acceleration right there, so I can mark it out, it won't work. Uh, the next one doesn't have acceleration in it. Then I look at the last one, it's got acceleration, I can mark that out. Just on this problem right here, I can mark it out. That's easy to find the equation. Now, I could have found the equation without knowing that. I could have just looked for what had VO, uh, VF and time in it and then displacement because that's what I'm looking for and I would know that this one would work. So I'm going to write down my equation next and I'm going to write it in this form. I don't like how that's written so I'll write it down like this because VO plus VF divided by 2 times your time. All right, that's my equation I'm going to use. I'm going to plug in my numbers where those symbols are. All right, so displacement is my unknown. I'm going to leave it as D. You know, it's just like an algebra when you solve for X, and instead of solving for X in this algebra equation we're setting up, I'm going to leave it as D because I think it's better to do it that way in physics. In physics, we, we you know, don't put the X in there. If it makes you feel better to put X in there where the unknown is, you know, 
you can do that. But D is equal to, then I plug in my numbers here, VO is 21.0 plus VF, which is 0. All that divided by 2, and then multiply by time, which is 6.00 seconds. So 21 plus 0, so it's going to be 21 divided by 2. So D is going to equal uh, 21 divided by 2. It gives me 10.5 times 6.00. Gives me 63. I want to go to two decimal places on all these questions to be consistent. That way we don't go by significant figures. And a lot of people have trouble with significant figures, so we're just going to go to two decimal places. So that would be 63.00. My units, since I'm filming for displacement, is going to be meters. Now we need to, you know, show your work. Put your uh, a box around your answer to, you know, separate that from your work. Okay. The the next problem that I'm working, and these are all going to be word problems. I'll go through first and look at the important information. What it's telling me: a world class sprinter can burst out of the blocks and reach essentially a top speed of about 11.5 meters per second. So. It's telling me that he goes out of the blocks. It should have said he starts from rest. That would have been easier. Since he goes out of the blocks, I can assume that his initial velocity is zero. And I won't do any other problems like that. I always have to say either if somebody starts at rest, that means their initial velocity is zero. If they start going to a stop, their final velocity is zero. So that's how you can keep what, what a velocity is what. So he reaches a top speed of about 11.5 meters per second. Well, that's meters per second. What's it's telling me a velocity, you know, and it's telling me the final velocity that he reaches in this 15 meter race. All right, it might not, uh, in the first 15.0 meters, that's something important. What's that telling me? Meters is displacement, so it's telling me. Yeah, that's a displacement. What's the average acceleration? It's asking me for acceleration. I don't, I don't know what it is. That's my question mark. So I want to write down my givens. I know that, again, I'm going to write down all the things that are in these equations. VF, VO, acceleration, time, displacement. And I'll start right now what this problem is giving me. I know that VO is zero. VF was 11.5 meters per second in the first 15.0 meters of the race. That's the displacement. It's in meters. So. What's the average acceleration? That's my question mark. If you notice, I don't have anything for time. Time's not asked for, and it's not given in the problem, so I can mark it out. It's not part of the problem. Since it's not part of the problem, I can go up here to my equations. Out of these four, got to pick which one would work to help me solve this problem. All right, so I look at the ones that have time in it because time is not part of the problem. It's not asking me to solve for it. It's not giving me information on it. So I, anything that has time... I can do away with. Well, this first one has time, so I can do away with it. It's not going to work. The next one don't have time. The next one has time. The third one has time, so I can do away with it. The fourth one has time in it, so I can do away with it. Only one of those equations will work to solve this problem. Now, I, didn't, I could have went by the other way. I could just wrote down my givens, the BF, the VO, the acceleration, displacement, and looked and see, 
what equation had those four variables in it and the only one that does is this one. The other ones have time in it. Alright, so I'm going to write that equation down. BF squared equals BO squared, so that's final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. I'm going to start putting my numbers in. BF is 11.5 so that's going to be 11.5 squared equals initial velocity of 0, so 0 squared, that I know is just going to be 0, and plus 2 times my acceleration. I don't know my acceleration, um, so in displacement, my D is 15.0. You know, then I have my acceleration out here. I'm solving for my acceleration. So I have to get my, you know, A by itself to solve for it. It's just like solving for X. If I have a little X there instead, you'd be able to solve this easily because you know how to do algebra. But just pretend like that A is an X and solve for A. So to do that, and already this equals zero. So I take, so I take 11.5 squared. That equals 132.25, and that's equal to and 2 times 15.0 is 30 times A. Now I need to solve for A. I still am not done, so I need to divide both sides by 30 and I get 4.41 and since I solve them for acceleration the units are meters per second squared Now, if I'm ever given a velocity that's not in meters per second, I need to convert it to, to meters per second. If I'm given displacement and something other than meters, I need to change it to meters. If I'm given, uh, you know, uh, time and something besides seconds, I need to change it to seconds before I ever plug it into my equation. So looking at the next problem, I'm going to read it carefully, underline what's important. A world-class sprinter can burst out of the blocks and, and reach initially a top speed. And this is the same problem. This is asking for something different. Reaches a top speed of 11.5 meters a second. And again, I told you she's bursting out of the blocks. You can assume his initial velocity is, initial is going to be zero. Because he reaches a top speed, and then that's obviously going to be a final speed. So, this is telling me a final velocity. In the first 15 meters, what is that? It's in meters, so it's a displacement. How long? It's asking for how long. It's asking me for time. So, time is a question mark. It's my unknown. So, I'm going to write all these guys down. Again, I'm going to write down everything that's part of kinematics, final velocity, Initial velocity, acceleration, time, displacement. And then right now what the, the problem gives me and uh, for this thing <clears throat> tells me if my final velocity was 11.5. Initial velocity was zero. Acceleration, it doesn't tell me the time is my unknown and displacement was 15.0 meters you notice it didn't ask for acceleration it didn't give me acceleration so acceleration is not going to be a part of this problem so I can come over here anything that has acceleration any equation acceleration and I can uh, it's not going to work this first one has acceleration in it 
not going to work. Second one has acceleration right here in it. It's not going to work. Um, the next one doesn't have it in it. And if I look at this last equation, it has acceleration in it, so it's not going to work. The only one that will work is this one right here. All right, I could have also looked over here and noticed I have a final velocity, initial velocity, time. So I'm looking for and displacement and look and see what equation had those four things in it. And the third one would only be the one that would work. So I'm going to write it down. Again, that equation, I don't like how it's written there. Um, I would write it like this. Initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2 times time. Right, I'm going to plug in the numbers and solve for the unknown. My displacement, D, is going to be 15.0 equals initial velocity is 0 plus 11.5. Divide it by 2 and multiply it by time. Now I need to use algebra to get everything, to get time by itself to solve for it. Alright, so this is going to be 15.0 equals 0 plus 11.5 divided by 2. It's taking me a second on my calculator. So that's 11.5 divided by 2. That's 5.75. 5 5.75 5 times T. I need to move the 5.75 uh, I need to get rid of that and since it's times t to get rid of it I have to divide both sides by 5.75 so that would be 15.0 divided by 5.75 equals 2.6086 I'm going to round two decimal places so that would be 2.61 since I'm measuring time it's going to be in seconds put a box around my answer and I'm finished I'm just using algebra putting in where those symbols are for those equations I'm putting in numerical values and then solving for the unknown. Just like you solve for x in a, an equation doing algebra. That's all we're doing. Okay, we have a couple more. And like I said, this is worksheet two. You should do on, we're supposed to do it on Tuesday. Okay, next problem. I'm a hurrying is approaching a stoplight moving with a velocity of positive 30 meters per second. That just means it's moving to the right or moving east. The light turns yellow and I'm going to apply the brakes and skips to a stop. So we know that first thing is moving with a velocity of 30 meters per second. The light turns yellow and I'm going to apply the brakes and skips to a stop. That's important. Now the first 30 meters per second is telling me an initial velocity. Coming to a stop tells me that the final velocity, you now it's telling me my final velocity is z equals to zero. If I'm a decelerates at a rate of 8.00 meters per second squared, it means she's slowing down at that, accel you know, acceler de accelerating and slowing down at that rate. All right, so, since decelerating 
it needs to be negative because it's slowing down. Anytime something's slowing down, we consider their acceleration to be negative. And then determines the displacement of the car during the skidding process. And then, uh, so it says then determine the displacement. So you're looking for displacement. That's your question mark. Note the direction of the velocity and acceleration vector. Since she's slowing down, acceleration should be negative. So it's just telling you that in the problem. I am. I'm going to write down all my variables for kinematics, which is final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, time, displacement. Now I'll start writing down what the problem gives me. My final velocity was, in this case, was zero because it was coming to a stop. So initial velocity, she was moving 30.0 meters per second. She decelerates at a rate of negative 8.00 meters per second squared, so that's acceleration, negative 8.00 meters per second squared. These units just tell me what these things are. And then determine the displacement, that's my unknown. Now time was not given to me in the problem, nowhere. It didn't ask me to solve for time, so it's not going to be part of this problem. So I can go up here to my equations. Any one of them that don't have time in them will not work. First equation has time, it will not work. The second one don't. The third one has time right here in it, so it will not work. And then the last one has time right there in it, it will not work. So time's not in the problem. It's not asking me to solve for it. Can't, can't be a part of it. And those equations that have it can work. The only equation that will work to solve this problem is this one. And it is Vf squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. And I start putting in my numbers for final velocity. That's zero, so zero squared, which is just be zero, equals initial velocity, which was positive 30, but that's just 30 point zero squared plus two times my acceleration, that's negative eight point zero zero times displacement, which is my unknown, so I'm just gonna put a D in there for displacement. And I'm gonna solve for D. So zero squared will be zero. Thirty point thirty squared is you know probably nine hundred. Plus what's two times negative eight would be negative sixteen times d. And I want to solve for d. How do I get d by itself? You know, at first I have to move this 900 over. I have to subtract both sides by 900. So that ends up being negative 900 equals negative 16 times D. All right. Now, how do I get D by itself? Now, I need to subtract I mean, divide, excuse me, divide both sides by negative 16 to get D by itself. So D is equal to my must have I didn't roll. So that's 900 divided by 16, gives me 56.25. So that would be my answer, 56.30, either one of those. If you get something close, I wouldn't count off. 56.25, since I'm solving for displacement, that will be meters. And so I'll work that one. All right.
got one more to go. I'm going to read the problem carefully. Underline what's important. Ben Russian is waiting at a stop block. So he's sitting in the, he's not moving. When it finally turns green, Ben accelerates from rest. So he's going from rest. And from rest is always, you know, an initial velocity of zero. At a rate of 6.00 meters per second squared, what does that tell me? Since it's a meter per second squared, it's giving me a acceleration for a time of 4.10 seconds. Seconds is a measure of times. It's giving me T. Determine the displacement. You know, so that's what it's only solved for. Displacement, that's my question mark, of Ben's car during the time period. So again, I'm gonna write down all of my variables that are part of kinematics, which is VF, final velocity, initial velocity, VO, uh, acceleration, A, displacement, D, and time. And I'm going to write down what the problem gives me. It gave me an initial velocity of zero. It gave me an acceleration of 6.00 meters per second squared. It's going to give me a time of 4.10 seconds. Determine the displacement, so D was my question mark. And if you notice, it doesn't give me anything about final velocity. It doesn't ask me to solve for final velocity, so that's not going to be part of this problem. So I can go look at any equation. It's going to have anything with final velocity in it. I can mark out. First one doesn't have final velocity. The second one has it here, so I can mark it out. Third one has it right here, so I can mark it out. The fourth one has final velocity right at the beginning. I can mark it out. All right, there's only one equation I can use. And all 90% of these problems, there's only one you can use. Every once in a while, you might get one to where you have enough information you can pick between two of them. But in this case, I can only use that top one, which tells me D. Displacement is equal to initial velocity times your time plus one half of the acceleration times your multiplied by time squared. And I'll start putting in my numbers. My displacement is unknown, so I'm leave it as D. What I'm solving for D. VO is zero times time, which is going to be 4.10 this end up being equal to zero plus one half times my acceleration which is 6.00 multiplied by my time squared is 4.10 squared All right, so then I, uh, you know, work this out. D is equal to zero times 4.10, so it's going to be zero. Plus, if I take 4.10 squared, 16.81, multiply that by 6.00, It equals 100.86, and then I gotta take a half of that. So I gotta divide that number by two. It gives me 50.43. And then of course my displacement is zero plus 50.43, which is just 50.43. And since I'm solving for displacement, that's gonna be meters. And that's how you work these problems. Uh, if anybody still has problems after watching this, let me know. I'll make another video. And I might make one of me working some problems on the study guide for next week uh, to go over a few.
and I've embedded videos within every day of this of someone on YouTube teaching the same concepts. They might use VI instead of VO for initial velocity, but they're working on the same way. So watch those videos also if you are having problems.